time in every fisherman's life when sooner or later you, yes, you, there, will want to go out in a fishing boat and at least try and catch some fish. And if you catch some fish, you might want to cook them. But will you want to cook them on the boat? Depends on the conditions. But I've been doing a lot of freshwater fishing lately. The call of the sea is there. I've got to get out. Join me on this one. Bring your plate, your knife and your fork as well. We'll see if we can catch something and even cook it in the boat. And the boat is nearly as old as I am. Guys, it's working at the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. I am down in a 50 year old clinker wood boat. I've got a shark line out. They told me there are bluefin tuna around here, really close to shore. I've got one chum block, a small bag that I can't get the chum block in, so I'm trying to get it thawed out and put bits of it over so I get a bit of a slick going. I'll put a shark line out. You never know, you never know. And I'm going to try fishing on the bottom. One of the guys apparently went out and hooked a tuna unbeknown to him at the time and he'd seen them jumping seen them busting down here in Devon and hooked up fought the fish snapped his rod like a carrot tried to fight it for ages on his reel I guess just the reel and the stump and I've done that with a Paul Beagle shark a 350 so I know what it's like he's tried to do that fight the fish and he stripped all his line out and bust his line in which case Graham shouldn't be dropping over the first field test of the prototype the new the unseen mini stick that I built. Now those of you who followed me, watch me building this rod, I'm going to drop it down and see if I can catch any fish on it. Go on. Just there, running ledger. Quite a long trace because I've been fishing with uh, Tom O'Dapp off the Bristol Channel last time. And a half a mackerel there, a small mackerel. I've only got four mackerel with me. They tell me there's hardly any bait. I have got something else unusual to drop down. They also tell me the black bream aren't as good as they've been other years. So let's see what we can do. Drop this puppy down. I almost dread hooking something on it. I've got a jumbo pound and a half, two pound mackerel left over from a previous trip here. It's been two trips, it's been a sort of little holiday for it. <laughs> the same mackerel. But listen, if there's a shark around, it'll take it. It'll be the first shark caught on these rental boats, I think. If I hook a tuna, well, Christmas come early, I guess. That's what happens occasionally, they say you hook them or you're accidentally fishing for sharks, brackets, exclamation mark. But I'm not targeting them. I'll really actually sooner catch a Paul Beagle shark about 100 pounds because that would be bearable on my own. I'm fishing solitaire, solo on my own, trying to catch anything at all. I could drop some small hooks down as well. But I figure if I can get this down without tangling, there might be a chance of a ray, a conger, something to see. Is it going to snap? I don't know, to be honest. Are the rings going to ping off? 
I don't know that either. I'm a late start today. It is what it is today, guys. Small tyres, not a lot of flow here. I can feel there's not a lot of flow. Anyway, the mini stick here is down. The reel, so you know, is a Accius S line 656CSM. Sort of B trailer up tied, but I figured it's just about right for this. And of course, I've got the fully patented uh, butt cap there of a draw, wooden drawer handle. Got to be in it to win it, boys. Be a lot of men going around. My wife's going to say, Where's the handle gone off my chest of drawers in the bedroom? Now, I've also got. Oh, God. You couldn't do it if you tried, could you? I've dropped some small hooks down, although they say there's no bream around. See, there's no tide. This is what they call a neap tide situation. Very, very small tides and no tidal flow. <clears throat> I've got a little light rod. Three hooks. One, two, three. Very small. A small two ounce bomb there. I'm going to check which way the anchor is holding on the rope. I'm swinging a little bit and just drop it out there and see what uh, what comes if I get any bites. I think I had a bite on that back one actually. I must check it out. But it's certainly not big fish might be a small fish tugging at it but when you see fishing and look there's no echo sounder uh, there's no GPS there's no radio there's nothing I can do to find fish here except go half a mile offshore throw the anchor down and hope it snags up well not snags up holds I think is the word we should be using snags up definitely what we don't want to use so I've got small hooks there I've got a set of feathers baited there as well The mini stick's already got hung up once. I'm going to move this camera bag. Hello, 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 hello. I hear either a snag or a fish down here. It might be in the bottom, I don't know. It's on half a mackerel. It's in the bottom. Happy days. Best thing I find is, if it is, I did see a bite of some description, there might be a small conger that's taken it back into his, his lair, his cave down this way. I tend to slack off, leave it down there with a the clicker on, and uh, tighten up. If I'm going to break out, I might as well break out in five minutes time rather than now. <clears throat> the chum I've got, mashed up fish bran and the secret raptor oil, won't come out of this bucket, it's frozen solid. But every now and then I just do this. I leave a little bit of water on the top. And you can see just a little bit on the top. Whoosh it all out. And that water on the top's gradually thawing it out. It's not ideal, but I've got no chance of doing it any other way. And if you can see there, there is absolutely plenty in the water. Surprised I don't get mackerel on it, but look where the, where the line's going there. I cannot get this shark line to run away. Let's try it down the front. <clears throat> See if it will drift. So the mackerel fishing rig is just there, a set of four mackerel feathers. And instead of a lead, I've got a small casting jig. It's the same outfit I use, or rig I use for fishing off the shore, because that way you've got the chance of a mackerel taking on the feathers and you've got a chance of a bigger mackerel, pollock or bass, taking the lure. So the lure is a weight, but it's got a hook in it. I can either cast it out and work it, or I can just drop it over the side. I'm tempted at this stage to drop it over the side because I've got all this chum going down under the boat. I just let it go down and let the rock of the boat move the feathers. Just like this. Almost a rod holder. And just the rise and fall of the boat might give him a bit of movement. Guys, I'm just about to have one of these and something else come on the feed. Oh my God, it's on the mini stick. I get so close I can put the rod top there. Watch. There's the bite, see it? It could just be a doggy. I'll settle for a doggy to christen this rod. The mini stick, a broken carp rod, a butt section snapped and broken, a door handle or a drawer knob, 
and it is definitely something he's eating it. My God, I think I'm on. I think I'm on. It's 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 a, it's, it's it's live. It's kicking. I, I can put the door handle underneath my chin. <laughs> I could put it in my nose, could not on my mouth. Hang on. Door <laughs> handle in my mouth. <laughs> I'll tell you what, whatever it is, if even a doggy is bringing it up. Fish one, hopefully, hopefully. Yes, I thought so, Mr. Dogfish. But listen, he's christened the rod. And that's all that matters. Quite a decent doggy, actually, that one, isn't it? Come here, boy. Decent doggy. Many dogfish have saved the day. It's even spitting, looks like spitting bits of my chum out there, see it? That's trout. I wouldn't have thought the trout went that deep, but it obviously does. Look at the oil, yeah. See the oil on the surface? That's a piece of chum that I shook up, sunk to the bottom. Do I hear another reel? Search around, Graham. Now the shark line's going back there, better see it. <clears throat> and because I'm anchored, everybody else is one, two, three. They use me as a sort of marker boy, thinking I know what I'm doing, and of course I don't. I'm just anchored and fishing. Well, I think the chum's got to go over again. What do you think? I'll tell you what I have got. This bait. Tomo on the lawn June put me onto these. Just in the supermarket. Whole shell on raw king prawns. And they are big and they are relatively tough. So you can fish them whole, you can fish them half, you can make combo baits on them, but keep them cool. And I've noticed I was using these beach fishing actually yesterday, literally yesterday that the head section has a lot of gunk and juice and lovely jubbly stuff in it. Now because I'm boat fishing and this is still frozen I don't actually need to do anything but just drop this down as it is. I feel. Might take a while to thaw out. I'm going to just give this a lob I'd just like the boat to... Oh look casting rod as well! A casting mini stick. Oh my god. Is this going to be all the rage? I reckon it could be. Maybe we should bring out our own line. We all know someone's going to copy this. Again, totally awesome, are the first. That's down, drag off. Skunks out the boat. Mini sticks christened. Sandwich time. Relax and enjoy. What's yesterday's sandwich? I've also brought with me as backup because I didn't know what the situation would be like. Chunks of rainbow trout, which I have caught on before. They just, you don't need to bury the hook with these because they're so oily, they chew their way up the hook. I just lob this out down over there. Look at this beautiful slicked off water. It would be really cool to see a pool beagle shark. About 100, 150 just swimming, cruising around the boat. Like. You get off the North Devon coast. Been a few years since I've done that. Yeah, doubtless still up there. Still be there. That's why I come sea fishing, that set in there. You're letting a reel go down with a bait on it. You have no conception of what's in the sea. Yeah, I've just got a pretty good idea, but it's not like a lake is just stocked full of fish and you go, oh, oh yeah, we know what we're going to catch today. Sea fishing, you do not know. They are all wild, they are not stocked. Chances of blanks might be higher, will be higher than a lake, but at the end of the day, it's got to be worth doing. Nothing on the small hooks. Cheers. Well, the boat appears to be bound to the land. The tide seems to want to go that way, and the wind is wanting to push it away, so I'm sort of wind against tide. But I figured when I fished the beach yesterday up there at Chesil, it was, it was it was ebbing this time of day. All day it was ebbing. So I don't understand what the heck's going on, as most fishermen with tidal situations and small boat anglers will know what I'm talking about. What the heck is happening? But yeah, here's my 
here's my office for the day. As you can see, I'm looking over there for, for breaking tuna, seeing if anything, birds diving, anything, anything, anything. I think I'll feed that shark line out a bit further. I'd love to get a poor beagle shark in it. Never been done before to the best of anyone's knowledge. At least I've had, I must have had four goes at it now. It's worth a try though. Well folks, you'll gather by the uh, position I'm in that the fishing is not exactly red hot. Every other boat next to me has moved. I saw one 16 inch mackerel caught among three boats and several rods. In fact, I've probably got more rods out here than the three boats put together. I'm, I don't know whether the tide has yet to turn. I put my chum in the water and as most sharkers know you don't normally move once you get your chum in the water but I'm not getting any action at all. I'm not seeing any jellyfish go past you. I mean, normally you'd be seeing, in this time of year, clear water, you'd be seeing, okay, I haven't got polarizing glasses on. I would see these huge, big, dustbin-sized jellyfish going past. You'd see a little bit of activity on the top. The only birds I've seen have been herring gulls, and they were immature herring gulls. So they're kind of stupid ones, you know, they're not the ones that are looking for fish. They're waiting for anything that's left over or dropped. Tempted to go inside to see if I can find a bit more tide. It's strange, you get this with neap tides, they just they don't do anything. Basically, they just don't do anything. Well, we'll give it a bit longer, but I've got that many big baits, small baits, lures, shark baits. I've got everything out there, and it's not a nibble. Don't need another one of those days. I really want to catch something on the mini stick. I'd like to catch something to eat, because I brought my cooker with me. Would be nice, bit of fun. But at the moment, it's looking pretty tough. Albeit pleasant, don't get me wrong. I just dropped down this one with some uh, little segments of that Atlantic uh, prawn on. And that is my first bite, a small fish, I'm guessing a pouting. It's pretty sort of, well, it's, get, well, it's actually moving. It's actually cutting through the water, what have we got? Oh my God, is it gonna be a mackerel? Is this, oh, no, don't, please, don't fall off, please don't fall off. I've got a frying pan with your name on it. Oh yes, look at this, look at this, it's an eater. It's an eater, this will save my day. No, 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 stop that fighting business. Look at that, it's a pan-sized mackerel, if ever I saw. Come aboard and come to dinner. Oh, so pleased, I can't tell you. I wish I'd done the lottery. Oh, yes. Right on the, why are nobody catching mackerel? They're right on the bottom. Let's get another one of them prawns out. Oh, yeah, tell you what I'm gonna be using, boys. Gonna try these crab sticks, why not indeed? Keep fish cool if you're going to eat them. And also, bring a hand wipe rag. I do not tell my wife Hilary that I'm using my best handkerchief, which was clean. It can, no, can, no, can be only used for hand wipe now. You don't get many in this, what, half a dozen, dozen or something. And what I did, just use segments like this, cut them in half. This head and guts in there is really good. the tail off that's useless over the side of the chum and then when I'm using small hooks like this I find it's better to peel them otherwise you're trying to cut through the segment and you never know you might just blunt that hook a little bit and I just go one two so I've got three baits there out of half of one of those Atlantic prawns well 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 mackerel on prawn Who'd have thought that? I'd have put black bream, yes. Gurnard, pouty, but I think, providing I've bought the frying pan and the gas cooker, I can do a cook up at sea. Catch and cook at sea. So here's a hook. And it is actually remarkably quite tough. Rather than go through the middle of the meat, I've just found I go through the outside of the Skin. It's not skin because they have a shell, don't they? Just push it like that. That one's okay. I'm going to top a piece up here as well. 
Yeah, he saw us catch a mackerel on the other boat. They're only after mackerel, the old feather chuckers. That's all they want. Only what you want for doing a catch and cook. And that one, where did I cast? I think I just lobbed it back. Two ounce bomb, three hook paternoster, small size, four hooks I think, two and four hooks, freshwater size. Providing you can hold bottom, you've got a job to go to beat that little method. Especially if you're a beginner, if you want action or eating fish. And in deep water, you know, obviously boat fishing perhaps a bit more than or with piers. Am I down? Isn't that weird? I get that and then I've got a set of mackerel feathers with a spinner there, which is, which is set out for them, and which is getting nothing. Life is strange at sea, is it not? These three baits on the bottom are absolutely pristine, nothing has touched them. Even the mini stick remains motionless. Well, fry up tonight guys. I see there's a boy right over there. Now I don't see the other end of it, but I'm assuming if it's over there, it's rough ground because they generally lob and crabs to fish here. <laughs> Did you get that one? That's a new, two new species, lob and crab. <laughs> lob and crabster. They do a lot of crab and lobster fishing down here, but they also do <laughs> lob and crabster. There's two new species I can get. That's another film. Will that be copied? Lob and, lob and crabster. They get over there, gentlemen, some lob and crabster. <laughs> Gotta laugh, ain't you? Don't get old, it's terrible. I don't even know where I am. Anyway, I'm thinking I can have a, a very nice starter because those crab sticks are fresh out the freezer this morning. Yes, they're in with the bait now, but they're still just thawing out now. I could have crab stick as a starter, and then I could have fried mackerel, and wait for this, how about fried Atlantic king prawns? I mustn't let them thaw out, you know, get in the sun or anything like that, so I reckon the next hour, especially if it's quiet, if it stays quiet and we're catching fish, I think I feel a fry up coming on of luxurious proportions of lob and crabster, two new species. <laughs> Come on, let's have a shark. Anybody got a 12 gauge behind their TV set? Could they shoot that squawking seagull? He's driving me mad. Talk about repetitive. Trouble is, I've got my shark line over there and I can tell you they come up and they peck at it. That's fine, they're not going to damage the float, but they might damage the line. And you know, they've got a sharp edge to their beaks, they might damage the line. I get a shark taken and wonder why the line snaps. There's nothing wrong with the line. I could do with a few more bites though. I'm wondering if I should move first, go in shore to see if I can find a bit more tide. Obviously I'm not going to get the shark in shore like, over tight to the cliffs. But just go in there, see what other species might be on the on the on the seabed. And then while I'm there, if the boat will stay straight, do my anchoring. My only concern is so what happening, the tide must be stopping in a minute, going this way, it's flooding, right? This wind is coming northeasterly, which is never great for fishing, but it's against the tide, so it sort of holds me. I'm, I'm neither here nor there. I, I'm just not sort of fishing properly at the moment. I'm not tangled. And the anchor rope's going up that way, which is not too good. I think we'll give it a 10 minute warning, guys. Well, <clears throat> you can see by the cliffs there, I've come way inside. You actually, little specks of people walking right along the top there. There's much better tide flow here. I've just sorting some rigs out, taking the shark line off. But I, I've thrown a half, sort of small mackerel out there, frozen one, on a long flowing trace. And the rod just pulled over and nothing else has come, so I don't know whether there's a fish there or not. I think we'd better try it. It could be weed. I don't think it's anything at all. Let's see if there's any bite marks on the bait. That should tell us. You will get a doggy or a bull husk pick up a whole fish bait. 
Yeah, look, there we go, story. Story there, something's chopped that straight in half. I better, I better give him the other half. Give the old two for one. Try again, I did think I saw the rod pull over. I was messing about there. Much more tied in here, you can see by the lines going straight back. So I'm hoping there will be some bites. You wouldn't think just coming in half a mile makes a difference, but it does. Close you get to the headland, it's pinching the tide a little bit and the water coming up this way, I guess funnels out a bit. The trap is set. Well, something else has come to tea, boys. I did have two on there, but messing around with the camera. I just ended up with one. That's casting and retrieving across the tide. So that's a bait size one as opposed to an eating size one. So there are mackerel down there. Not many, admittedly. Look, that's last year's mackerel that's been frozen, that's this year's mackerel. Tell me which you think is the best year class. There's the chum guys, that's the uh, chum starting to thaw. Well, oh, there's a pull, there we go, whoa, 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 whoa. Trying to get the camera sorted, I was trying to film the chum for you, but it looks like I'll end up losing two fish if I'm not careful. What is this? Is this Max? Is this Bream? That was on pieces of that shrimp on the Atlantic shrimp, king prawns, not shrimps. Mind you, we've had lob and crabster, so we've got uh, shrimps and prawns getting mixed up now. Well, that move inshore paid off to, to get me tidal flow at the moment. I might still, if this dies on me, go outside deeper again. This feels like an eater, and I'm getting a tap on that one up there as well. There it is. Yeah, look, 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 that's a tap. That looked like a green bang, that one. Which means if I get these in, oh, these or it, oh, that's a pretty good fish. I don't know what it is. Certainly edible size by the feel of it. Big Mac, I reckon. Sometimes, you know, towards winter you do get Big Macs on the bottom. Oh my goodness me. What a scrapper, whatever it is. I think it must be a bream. It is. Oh, oh, oh yes. Yes, please, nurse. Oh. Well, there we go, boys. That is, I'm not going to keep it because I've got the mackerel to eat. Absolutely chunking great big fat bream. And I did say up there, the bites on that looked like bream. Beautiful bream set against the cliffs there. Probably just about to spike me. I'm just going to get hold of him properly. Wow, he was hooked. He wasn't coming off. Oh no, I've got a bite on this one. Go in quick, quick, quick. This is a big chunk of bait, this thing. This one is it. Gotta give him some slack line. Give him some slack. Is he still there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it might be a doggy tugging. That's like a tug, tug, tug of a dogfish. You might just be able to see down the rod blade. If I draw back on him, there it is. Just got it there. There. See the tap? Oh yeah, he's got it now. I'm going to go for it. Probably a dog. It's a big piece of mackerel. Well, I knew that tide wasn't right out there. Yeah, this would be a doggy fish, I'd say. If he's still on, feels like he might come off. But he was a chunky, great big piece of bait. Yeah, he's come off. See the bait now. What's happened there? Look, I've missed that fish. The point has twisted and gone back in the hook there. So it's just like bad luck at trying to keep the hook point clear at all times. Well, I need to I need to do spinning, I need to get my shrimp bait out. Well, you can see the size of these pools. So, just small pieces of, of shrimp on there. And if there are bream out there, they should sort of home in on this stuff pretty well. Just gonna make sure if I'm gonna have a fry up, I keep enough back on the pond. That is 
so they can also to be honest be coming in the bits of chum I was washing over so I want to keep casting down that sort of area and there should be more than one bream there and I've got taps on that they probably stripped that, that half mackerel I left out there Got a scream on here, guys. I've got it on the bait when I don't know the fish is still there. This is kind of stupid ground. It's always done the same, always been the same. Always been the same. Might have a f oh look, look 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 oh double doubled up doubled up boys double trouble put my foot on that one fall in the water I've no idea what this is could be just a dog but there's double fish on here I've got this one down as a doggy and I've got the other one down as a bream just start to spin a little bit like dogfish do I may be wrong but I'm not no, I am wrong Small conger, oh, 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 another species, another species. Come to the frying pan. Well, no, you won't fit, will you? He's gone. Quickly, Graham, quickly. Stay tight on the other one. He's gone. Son of a gun. Just went out there too. But even though I just baited out, I'm still putting it straight back down, guys. Uh, shake the chum, I feel. Rather dump the chum because that definitely seems to have. Seems to have done something, perked it up a bit. Look at that. Just imagine a great white shark coming into that. Lovely jubbly. Have you seen that one hammer over? What the heck? Oh! Fish. Fish. My kingdom for a fish. Oh. I can't see me doing this fry up, guys. The way the bites are coming now. I just wanted that tidal flow. Could be another dog, I don't know, I don't think so. It's more like to be a small eel. No, I got it wrong any other way again, Graham. It is indeed a dog. A dogfish. <sighs> Strange how you see the swell coming this way. That's in the south which I thought a southwesterly is more likely to get a swell, and this is going to be a lot of wind coming from the east or a southeast later. Maybe a day or two, something like that. Might be a storm brewing out there, who knows? Come on, let's get down. Down. Just going to check that little chappy here. Way back there. That's the honey pot. Just gonna peel this one. 
and see the whiskers on that one there, look how long they are. I just see if these two will lightly bind together to make one bait. It's a proper seafood cocktail this one. Seafood stick. Watch those rods. So it's gonna go. So I'm I'm hooking the the bait after I've done this whipping guys. Don't lose the thread, okay? And then I'm just gonna hook in and under the elastic like this. A bit like they do boat fishing. Right, get him down there. Well, just thinking of uh, having a fry out because it's gone quiet and no, it hasn't, the rod only went over the side. Got to be a bream, got to be a bream I think. But it has generally, generally gone uh, a bit quiet. Nothing on the crab stick and prawn combo. I say this could be quite a nice bream, two pounds or so. I'm guessing, it's definitely not a dogfish. Here he comes, I've got colour. That's a nice bream. Oh, beauty, yeah. That is an eater, boys. Oh, that is, wow, that's a beaut, that is a beaut. That is a beauty, so fat. It's probably full of my chum. Probably full of the chum. If we took everything to eat, there would be nothing left to catch. Probably when we get to the winter and there's another lockdown or something, I'm going to say, I wish I'd ever thrown that bream back. I think I need a little bit of chum going out. Right, food prep time, boys. It's gone a bit quiet. If I do this, guarantee one of these rods is going to belt over. There's a second uh, cutting board here of dubious origin, but I've washed it. I've washed my knife. All right. These have still got, I can feel they've still got ice in them. So I'm going to cut a couple of these up. Let's wash Mr. Mackerel. Now I'm going to take a fillet off him because they do not get any fresher than this. Look at that, guys. I wonder if I could eat three of those prawns. I better keep a bit for bait. So I'm gonna cut the head off the prawn. Voila, tail off. Peel the shell. And I pull the legs out. Not quite sure how long you cook prawns for. It can't be much different to fish. Does anybody out there know prawns? I know they normally cook them in a wok, don't they? The shells and the bits go you know where for fish chum. I'm cutting just behind the, the head and the guts there. You can see there's a segment there. Oh, there's the guts. I don't really need to eat prawn guts. I'm amazed the rod hasn't gone off. I'm covered in gunk. You think a rod, rod would have gone off. Keeping the, oh, we'll have another one because the time you take the head off, they're actually, they're actually not as big as you think they are. Just there. See the dark goes to light. So there's three heads there for bait. Somebody would probably say, oh no mate, you're doing it wrong, you cook with the shell on. I don't think you do. I think you peel them and I think I used to run my finger along there and just wash out any of the uh, gunk in the back bone. So we'll wash these. Crush the microphone, you stupid child okay. game. Right, so they're ready. Then all I'm gonna do is take a fillet off, carefully here.
wash my knife again. That's as clean as we're ever going to get the sea here, I feel. Just run our knife along there. I always find it strange you tend to be able to fill it well one side and not the other. That's me personally saying that. I think it's because you've got the weight of the fish cavity. There's a bit of meat on there, but listen, a couple of fillets there. I'm not going to bother. I'm just going to fry them skin on. Survival fishing. These are now ready for the frying pan. That is now ready for the hook back in the cooler. Heads back in the cooler. Wash up and get frying. Oh, it's a nice flat surface. Normally, normally I'm uh, cooking on a beach of something. It's always crooked. I always have trouble because it's crooked. Something different here, boys. Something different. They do it on charter boats, but do they do it on self-drive boats? I don't know. Look at all that line somebody's left there. Look. No, why don't you just, just clear it up? I don't understand that. Put it in there. The wife can clear that up. Probably going to have to hold this, I would guess, guys. Just uh, the rocking of the boat might put the, the frying pan all over the place. Just wait for that to start, what I call pinking. Go when it's smoky. These do burn hot, these, uh, these, these little burners. I'm just happy to be out here, surrounded by people that think I'm, they can smell the fish, I guess. Do they, do they want to catch fish or do they want to eat my fish? No more bites. We don't need bites at the moment. The tide's pretty dead, that's why I'm taking a gamble. I guess you get these a bit longer than the mackerel, do you think? I don't know. Now, will they go pink? I ask myself. Well, yeah, they do, Graham. Pink, 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 pink! Has I got the gas too hot? Very difficult to trim these up. Oh man, the smell. <laughs> they should be done in butter, I know, but hey ho. I guess. A couple of minutes each, shall we, guys? I don't know. No bites, no bites yet. Please, no bites yet. Pretty sure I've got tongs in. You know, it's a fisherman when you get tongs and a load of old fishing line. Now, I'm going to pop the mackerel fillets in. Perhaps not. I'm going to. Pop the mackerel for it in there, skin side down. What if I should put some of that chum in there? A little bit rubby dubby. Oh, I haven't had my crab stick. Oh, hang on a second, I've got to have a starter. I call it a crab food. Crab stick is actually seafood sticks. There we go. Do you like they taste of? Seafood. Mmm. They've got these little bits of paper around them. Unwrap them. Mmm. That is a good start. It's a real seafood course, this one. Two minute warning, I think. If that. Mmm. I mean, remember, no bites on the uh, mini stick. Done there, guys. And there we have it. Oh, the freshest mackerel I could ever have caught and, and cooked. North Atlantic prawns, peeled and cooked. That, boys, is fit for a king. 
some of you might be able to sit on this. It's quite warm. Oh yeah, look at that. What a setting. This is the life, boys. This is the life. Let's try it. Oh, yes. That's hot. Huh. I want some sauce on that. Mm. Good taste, though. And we all know. Fresh mackerel cooked on the boat. When well, you can do it, bang it on the bed, cook it straight away. That's the freshest you'll get. And it's just a different taste. It's a different animal. It's not like frozen ones. I did get it right. I'm not eating last year's bait, am I? No, this is a fresh one. This is a fresh one. Tap them. A bit of shadow mess. Mm. Well, they look cooked to me, people. Experts to oh god, it's, <laughs> it's right hand rod, right hand rod, right hand rod. Hang on a minute. <laughs> I think it's still there. Oh. Has anybody got a record for running on a boat? Those prawns are nice and still chewing them up. I don't think it's a bream, it could be a mac. And these feathers are, you know, Billy Basic feathers. Pretty big hooks and barbs on them. Well, I was lucky to get that cooked, wasn't I really, let alone eat it. Oh yes, please. A cluster, but... A, oh my God. Three out of four, boys. Three out of four. Brilliant. Better eat me food and then sort these boys out. I'm choking on fish and crab sticks and whatever. Come on, babe. Come on, babe. Let's see, let's see. Such an amateur. Here he comes, here he comes. No, it's a big bream. I'm very surprised. I really thought that was a conger. Look at the size of, look at the size of the bait he's taken. I mean, hold still buddy. I mean, look at the size of the bait. It's a conga bait and a conga hook. Great big bream. You'll be a good boy. Otherwise, you know what's coming next. One of these, that's right. Off you go, you're lucky. Well, boys, I've come right out deep again. I saw some uh, pot boys out there. I thought I'd come and try out there. Died on the inside, the tides died. This is the problem with a neap tide. It just doesn't turn around quickly, just ambles and wanders around willy-nilly, doesn't really run hard. And that uh, gives the fish a problem in homing, I thought I had a bite then, in homing down on your smell or scent from the bait. So I'm just kicking around for the last literally 50 minutes. So if I don't get back to you, thanks for watching the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. At least I got a catch and cook out of the way. Oh my God, I'll tell you what else has disappeared. Those crab stick things, the seafood sticks have gone. Followed by blackberry and apple pie, some chocolate biscuits, oh, uh, fried mackerel, fried, fried prawns. Man, I'll be pleased to get back in. I just hope they left everything unlocked. Anyway, good times had by all me, solo alone in the boat. I love it. 
a little bit slow on the fishing, but that's the tidal situation. I'm grateful for the weather. So we'll see you guys next time. Hit the subscribe button, both channels, TA Fishing, TA Outdoors, and we'll do our best to catch you a few fish and maybe catch and cook on the next one. And when I say, when I say goodbye, I told you it was fishing, of course, I'm fibbing somewhat. Set of bladed mackerel feathers, I don't know what it is, it's not mackerel, but it just went straight over. Doggy or small strap ears. Got it right again, boys. Big dogs, I must admit, they're big dogfish. Oh. And there we go. As they say, it ain't over till it's over. I reckon I've got 10 minutes. Throw this guy back, get these feathers straight back down again. Bit of Atlantic prawn on the bottom hook and just heave it out there. Oh, his last cast of something else, I think. Put this one down as Max. Whoa, full house coming. And one jumbo. Oh, big one. Jumberini. Oh my God. And Jumberini and most naturally, as is the case with me with many rods, yes, another line. And it's braid. Happy days. Still going, guys. It's about the four and a half minute warning now I'm down to. Here comes the Coast Guard. It's the Dogfish Patrol, I should say. And it's another doggy. The bonus in this one is, I'm not tangled up my braid. The old Coast Guard. Up there. Might be on manoeuvres, I don't know. Hopefully I don't have to call on his services. But that's the final time, three fish later. We'll see you in the next episode.